Rusty hex. That's the one I used when I blade the trail, remember? Oh. I'm gonna thread these out a bit here. Well, folks, we've been milling for uh, an hour or so, maybe two hours already. So we have quite a bit in the sleigh, but we're gonna finish up these two small logs. Then we're gonna start putting more strapping up, get everything all set up there so we can start doing the siding tomorrow, maybe. pretty quick I guess we ended up milling up what we brought out yesterday after we did the video of doing the strapping and the fascia we went and got a small load of logs and with that small load of logs we put the ones with the bark here this is gonna be strapping so there's four there now we need five and a half pieces to do to finish the strapping so there's four pieces there and there's 26 beautiful looking one by six pine right here a lot of this is going to be for our siding now we're gonna to have to take a few out of there because we need five and a half so there's four there so if we didn't have to there's 26 there that would do 13 feet these are only six inches wide and it takes two to make a foot so 26 divided by two works out to 13 in in my little brain so anyways we're going to take those over and it's starting well it's about mid-afternoon i guess here the sun is Pretty much, well, you can't really see it, but it's kind of above, the, it's to the right of the house there. Right there, you see that? That's where the house is. And I'm standing, I'm uh, not quite straight north. I mean, straight south, I mean. But anyways, yeah, we're gonna take these over and we're gonna get that strapping up there. We're gonna finish the strapping and then we're gonna take those in the basement. And I think, Heather, you're going to stain those probably this evening? Yeah, I am. Sounds good. Well, let's get to her. Okay, folks, well, we ended up getting that lumber all brought over. 
I think the first step we're gonna do is put up the two by fours along the wall and then once that is done and in place, then we're gonna do that top piece of strapping. We're gonna do all the strapping and then we're gonna take the one inch boards in the basement and we're going to start to uh, stain those and see what we can do today. Somebody asked me, somebody said I use this too much doing the, the uh, fascia, but uh, when you're dealing with a rough lumber, he said I could just go off the, uh, the roof that's already there. But uh, we built this whole place out of rough lumber, so on the top plate of the wall, top plate in spots is up a quarter inch higher. And since the trusses are all made out of rough lumber too, some of the trusses are up a quarter inch wider and some of the strapping is not even either so it's the it's the fascia if you get that perfectly straight then the rest of the roof is going to look straight the roof edge is going to look clean and crisp but if you try to follow a crooked roof then everything's going to look crooked you have to use a level to get a straight look on that or else your your, your fascia is going to go like this because i'll show you what that tin looks like and you'll see what i mean you have to when you're using rough lumber. You have to go with straight edge. You look at some of that's up, some of that's down because it was also used roofing metal. And you look here, see that truss, there's quite a gap up there. There's quite a gap in between the truss and the wall here. That one's not as much of a gap. Some of them is more gap than less. And uh, that's why I use the a level to straighten that fascia up and if I stand here you'll see how it looks nice and level now of course it has to be a day where the roof is dripping so you see here this here that is sitting on the wall this one here is not on the wall so and look at some of this roofing metal is up off see here like look at look at that strapping is wowed up under there see that if i had a so when i put my when i put my uh if we put metal flashing on there that will repair that but if i were to run that straight with that tin and not use the level this fascia would have been so crooked it would look like some hillbilly amateur did it and i didn't want that i wanted this to be a nice straight look so that's why a level is your friend when you're using rough lumber I'm gonna get down here. Even, even on here, folks, you use a level as well, because if you go using these spacers, I always check it, I use the spacers as a guide, but if you go off the top, right, you level your first board, then you that spacer, the top board sits on the spacer, but if one of these boards are an eighth of an inch thinner than that one, the next one's eighth of an inch thinner, then you're gonna end up getting that drop down and it's gonna run on an angle after a while. So you always have to check with the level and then just make it look close. That way, if your nails are ever exposed, it looks like a nice straight line where your nails are if your battens don't cover it. That's the other reason I use a level up there too. And I use these spacers, but I always check it with a level just in case they're because I'll show you here sometimes there's varying thicknesses here so you can't rough lumber is just that it's rough lumber so this here where it's six inches right on this one here look at that wider than six inches so if you start using just a spacer you're gonna be off in no time at all and it's it's gonna look pretty wacky, folks. So, I use the guide, I use the spacers, plus a level, and I just kind of, uh, um, I take the average, and that's how I work it. So anyways, Heather now and I, we're going to get set up here. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna get those two by fours out of the way, we're gonna hook up the hose, and then we're gonna get up there and we're gonna measure down, and we're gonna see where we want that two by four. The two by four on the wall, is going to go an inch higher than if I take a little level and run from the, the fascia in, I'm gonna move that two by four up one inch. So that's where that's going to sit. So where do you want these? 
Um, first thing we're going to hook that hose up so it don't take off down on the ground. I'm worried if we start moving stuff, it's going to take off. So, see that? Oh, I'm going to need another strip of nails if you don't mind. I got the hose. We're also going to want to move that box in closer where it's not under the grip of the Please. We're going to square those up and we're going to cut them eight feet long. Okay. Square one. Make sure you always square the best end first. You look at it, you square the best end, and then if you have to cut some off the other end, hopefully you cut the bad spot off. So I don't know if you got that, folks, but we're using rough lumber too. I always cut it usually two, three inches longer in the bush just in case my chainsaw cut is off a little bit. So I always remind Heather when you're going to cut something, it's probably downstairs on the blue cord, babe. Okay. Because that blue cord's not good. So when you cut your ends with a rough lumber, you always look at the best side and the best end, you cut it nice and square. Then you flip it around, but sometimes you have to take two or three inches off. That way, if there's a bad spot with bark or just a bad spot, you get to cut that off. But if you only square up the bad end, then you're leaving that bad end on there and you're cutting the good end off the other side. So that's how we do it here too. Can you try it? So that's a practice we try to use. So I'll be right back. Nope. I'll hold it. Yeah. That blue cord, right? Yeah. yeah. So that's what we try to do, babe. Uh, folks, I almost called you babe. <laughs> That's what we do, folks, because uh, when you're working with rough lumber, it's not like just going to the lumber yard and getting what they call good lumber or select lumber. This is a whole different ball game when you're working with a one inch. Even even along the even along the fascia, we had to pick out boards where th that were the same thickness. And when you're doing your siding too, you look at the cup too. So you make sure that not all the cups are going outwards the same way. It's better if they go out. I mean, you don't want your cups dishing away from the wall. You want it dishing out from the wall in the center. So that way you nail the outsides, it's good. And I don't nail it with one nail either, folks. I nail on either side because these boards are already dead standing trees. They don't shrink much. So when I nail them, they don't split. The reason I know that is because our little shed we built all out of rough lumber. We did the board and batten on there. I nailed on the outsides and it never went nowhere. It didn't split at all. The uh, pole barn over there too, that's all uh, dead standing material. And we nailed those on the outsides as well. One nail on the outside, it didn't split. Um, usually what they used to do on board and batten is they just took different various widths and they drove one nail in the center. And they put the bark, the live edge, they turned it away they turned it in a direction so that you couldn't see in from the outside. I believe the, I believe on the house, the the uh, live edge faced inwards on the siding, so that way you didn't get wind blowing in. But I could be wrong on that. You have to check that out. I don't remember now, but I remember reading something a long, long time ago, and that's what they said. But anyways, Heather and I is going to get at this, and, and we're going to get going. So we hope you enjoy this, folks. If you're new here, please subscribe and. Uh, and hit the like button, the thumbs up button. It really helps us a lot. And we'll see how we do this. This is kind of very, very boring and tedious. So that's why we speed it up and add music to it just for your comfort. So we have a, we have a good, probably another six hours of working out here, but it's nice out here today. It's about five degrees above zero at Celsius here. So it's pretty nice. Yeah, babe, sorry about that.
I'll show you how this is looking. So what size is it uh, Just kind of eight foot long, babe. Eight foot? Yeah, eight foot's fine, yeah. So, look, see when I measured, hey. Who's the hillbilly? I left just enough room there for that to fit up there. And the same on the far end, I just had to tap it in. It fits snugly, but look at this strapping here. And I did this strapping on the ladder, folks, and that's how close I got to that piece fitting. You probably remember where I put that up and then I took it off and turned it around end for end. And I even left enough room and it fit up there perfectly, so yeah. Yeah, you almost think I know what I'm doing here. Now this don't matter if it sticks out a little bit here. It doesn't matter if it's thicker there, that two by four, because things are getting nailed under the bottom as long as that's level and straight across there, it looks good. But the, but the fascia, it matters if it sticks out too much because it's going to get dressed up with just paint. That's all it's gonna get. Now, if I wanted to make it really fancy, I would have did like I did years ago. I would have taken that and I would have cut a 45 degree angle away from uh, the roadside so you wouldn't see that that uh, that joint. <coughs> it would overlap and face away so you'd never see that. But I didn't because I wasn't too concerned. Sorry, I didn't mean to. What's that, babe? I was gonna say, so we're starting at that end? Or this yes, the scaffold's here. We'll start at this end and work okay. our way back. So I'm gonna set the camera down here. Sure. <coughs> I got some sawdust. Milling all morning with a sawmill. <coughs> no sawdust at all. <coughs> Come out here and I get around that and I got sawdust. You can carry that down. I'll set up the camera, babe, if you don't mind. Now that just goes up tight with the uh, bottom board. And like I say, that two by four has to be built out a little bit. I may put another two by four over top that later because uh, once you get this one inch strapping and then another, then our one inch um, uh, siding, that's that's gonna be right out the same thickness of that two by four. So we're gonna put another two by four over that later on. what's going on here as well. Maybe you can't. Heather's cutting that, so very shortly, I'm gonna put that piece up right there. So I don't know where to set you folks, but you can watch Heather here. And then I'll move it over and she brings it down. <laughs> crunch, crunch. Thanks, babe. We're gonna stick it up right here. How is that fit good? Oh, perfect. I'm gonna bring the level because I do want to check that for level. Because if any time we want to hang something or attach something to the wall, I want to make sure I know what the level. How does that sound? And I gotta come down here. Where do you gotta go? Yeah, you'll have to hold that. Okay. Oh, 
I'll measure the other one? Yeah. Just under 39 and a quarter. And the bottom one will be, yeah, just do, just a little under 39 and a quarter, babe. Alrighty. While she cuts, I take a break. When I nail, she takes a break. So it works out perfect. So once we get all this done, all the strapping done, and there's nothing else to do except for go downstairs. Well, you know what? We could probably put up the east troughs today. You know that? Yeah. Oh, okay. A little shorter? Oh, no, if it's on it the other way, babe, maybe. Yeah, I think that might be good. Yeah, right? But that's only five inches, is it? What's going on it's there? No, it's sick. It's supposed to be six Just inches. a lot of weight. A lot of weight, yeah. We're going to use it anyway. I don't care. Your end's got to go up. Right there. I mean, like, now the bottom one here, I'll give you a measurement on that. I think I have one out, actually, you know what, I'm going to go get one from... Out front? Yeah. Yeah, we need it just under 39 and a half, so I'll tell you that when you come back. Okay. So Heather found a piece of strapping that was up front that we didn't use, it was just uh, basically scrap, so we'll do that. She just a hair under 39 and a half, right? Yes, ma'am, that's correct, babe, if you don't mind. So like I say, we spent most of the morning at the sawmill and part of the afternoon, so uh, starting to get a little late out here, but it's still nice and warm, and I wouldn't mind doing, I wouldn't mind putting up some eaves troughs. That way it's not dripping on us as we're working here. I don't really like that whole drip stuff coming down on us. That'd be a nice little project for the rest of the evening here. Perfect. Well, let's get this put up. Okay, are you level with the bottom there? Are you flush on me? Oh, it just dropped. Take your gloves off. You can't do it. Okay, I'm That's good there? Um, Gotta be flush. Right there. Yep. Say when? Right there. Okay, you can let go. So all the strapping is complete folks, this is all. We use some of this bad stuff here, but it don't matter. And uh, the reason I want to make sure that is level, like I said earlier, if we ever go to hang anything out here and we want something solid and we know where the strapping is, we measure it from the bottom. We measure up two foot and it'll be centers of these except for the top one, it's pretty close, but I'll remember that. And we know that it's going to be perfectly level along there. So if you wanna hang something up or do anything, we know exactly where the strapping is. We're not just screwing into that one inch siding. And all the nails here, if you look, all my nails line up with the, just like I did at the front. All the nails I did the strapping on, they go straight, they go straight into a wall stud because these trusses sit right directly on a wall stud. So if you look, you see that's nailed there. There's a nail there. It's nailed there. It's nailed there. It's nailed there right in line with a truss and a stud. So that, wherever I could, like here, where it ended, I wasn't concerned. 
but the less you can drive a nail inside your OSB in through that insulation, the less frost and cold you drag in with these nails. That's what I found. I've taken buildings apart before and where nails um, permeated inside the, the interior, inside the wall, the outer wall, you always got frost on that nail when you take the insulation out and that frost will end up dragging moisture inside your wall from the outside so that's why I do that so yeah I'm not just winging it it may look like it but I'm not just winging it